Um, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming so early. Um, yeah. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, Grease Pencil. I'm here. Um, my name is Falk. I'm here with uh, Rick and, and Pablo. And uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, some development updates, uh, what happened in, in the past year, or what we did. Um, and they're going to showcase some cool stuff that they did with Grease Pencil. So um, prob people here have probably heard of the Grease Pencil 3 project. Uh, but for those that didn't, um, I'm going to reiterate a bit on, on what that was. But this is the project that we worked on um, for over a year, um, but mostly like since the last conference. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, so Grease Pencil 3 is a, is a bit uh, weird to explain to people because the first thing that people ask is what, what's going to be new? But the new thing about Grease Pencil 3 is that we're going to remove limitations, <laughs> which is not super exciting for people. Um, nonetheless, there are some new feature, uh, features that got added for 4.3, and I'm going to talk about them later. Um, but yeah, Grease Pencil 3, it was all about um, redesigning the architecture of Grease Pencil to allow for more things to happen. Uh, so performance was one big thing. Um, you know, when you scale up Grease Pencil to like production sizes, you run into limitations. Um, and those had to do with the architecture of Grease Pencil, right? Like you have to remember Grease Pencil started out as like this little annotation tool and then the community picked it up and like made it into a full fledged uh, 2D animation system. But the architecture underneath didn't really change that much. Um, and the Grease Pencil 3 project wanted to do that change. Um, technical debt, um, you know, Grease Pencil existed for like over 20 years at this point. Um, and then also better integration with the rest of Blender. Now, um, there's more to do there. So we want to integrate the rendering better with the rest of Blender. Um, ideally, we want to render Grease Pencil with Eevee. That would be the best case scenario. Uh, but that's going to be a different project. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is in a nutshell um, what the Grease Pencil 3 project was about. And the focus was on feature parity with what Grease Pencil could already do. Uh, and this is, again, the, the point where it's difficult to um, convince people that this is a good thing because we didn't really do anything new um, in terms of the features. Um, but yeah, the focus was on feature parity to keep the scope as small as we could. It was already a huge project. Adding new stuff would have exploded the scope more. Um, and one interesting thing is that Grease Pencil for most of its lifetime was completely community driven. Uh, there was nobody at the Blender HQ directly working on Grease Pencil. And this project is specifically interesting for this because like doing a big refactor is not very exciting for the community. So doing, <laughs> managing this project um, was very interesting. But still, um, many people have contributed. And uh, looking at the commits and the lines that we changed in the code, around 20% of the work came from volunteers, which is amazing. Uh, I want to give a shout out to all the people. Um, round of applause <laughs> to everybody here. Um, yeah, like some of these people uh, contributed a lot. And without them, you know, we probably wouldn't have had Grease Pencil 3 and 4.3. Um, so thank you again. And yes, speaking about 4.3, the project is done. Like the Grease Pencil 3 project of redesigning the architecture and, and porting all the features, all the modifiers, all the tools, um, etc., is now done. Uh, it's going to be in 4.3. First week of November is the, is the release, or it's, is the schedule for, for release. Uh, and this is very exciting because now we can shift gears into not doing like these refactors and changing the architecture, but actually focusing on improving Grease Pencil um, new things. Um, but first, some lessons learned. So this was a huge project. It took a long time. It took longer than expected. Um, and there's some things that we need to improve when it comes to these sorts of like big projects. Ideally, we don't want to make a project this big 
it's kind of hard when you need to like change the whole foundation of uh, a feature. Um, but yeah, ideally we don't want to break main um, and we um, yeah, want to keep the, the scope as small as we possibly can without breaking too much things. One thing that actually worked well for us is um, some time ago in, in the earlier days of Blender, features like this would be implemented in a branch separate from like the alpha, the, the main branch. Um, but what we did is we worked on the experimental flag for a long time. So this is, um, people probably know, but you have uh, in the preferences like a developer option and you have an experimental tab and they can enable features that are being developed. Um, and this meant that we could work on main, like this was in Blender, but it was hidden under an experimental flag. Uh, and that worked really well. Uh, so this is one of the positives uh, of the lessons learned. <laughs> um, okay, but now let's talk about 4.3. And I want to highlight uh, three of the main features that um, are going to be there. Uh, the first one, something that people have talked about uh, quite a bit, is layer groups. And this is, um, you know, something that you would expect uh, in a 2D uh, uh, drawing animation software. And so now we have them. It's mostly for organization um, to make your <laughs> layer tree look prettier. Uh, they have colors. Um, and you can also do multiple operations at once. So you can see, for example, that the, um, the groups also have like the eye icon to hide um, everything. And that, that will hide every layer inside of that group. Um, and yeah, you can lock them, etc. And you can also uh, merge entire layer groups into one layer. Um, like collapse them down, basically. Um, and so I'm sure like, yeah, those, these are gonna get more features along the way, um, but this is what we have in 4.3. Thank you. <laughs> um, then a big one, uh, geometry nodes. Now, <laughs> I said in the beginning that the focus was on feature parity, <laughs> But uh, this happened, and the work was mostly done by the Geometry Nodes team. It wasn't actually done by the, the Grease Pencil module. The re-architecture of Grease Pencil 3 meant that um, it inherently supported uh, Geometry Nodes. Most of the work then went into like building nodes, etc. Uh, but sort of the underlying support for Geometry Nodes using the Attributes API, um, as we can see here in the spreadsheets, all of Grease Pencil is now Attributes, uh, like. The entire drawing is now stored as attributes on the point and curve domain, and we can even store custom attributes on layers, um, which is something that I think people haven't really uh, utilized yet, but I think that's, that's also very interesting. Um, all right, uh, next up, also something that happened but wasn't done by the Grease Pencil module uh, is brush assets. Um, so with that, we also get the uh, asset shelf at, uh, at the bottom currently um, with some essential assets. So these are gonna be expanded also in the future. So right now we have like a few uh, preset brushes um, and yeah, people can create their own brushes and you mark them as an asset, you save them into your brush asset library and they'll be there whenever you open uh, a new instance of Blender. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's something else that happens. <laughs> um, thank you. And there's a ton more, so um, yeah, here's like the, the, the release notes section. So if you wanna check out all of the, the stuff that happened, um, you can scan the QR code and, and get to the page. Uh, there's also the migration page. So things that change between 4.2 and 4.3 is explained there, um, how you can migrate files, etc. The Python API is a big one, um, updating your add-ons to work in 4.3. All right, um, so that was 4.3. Now, a little bit about what comes next. Um, so I think, personally, I would like to focus on some of the basics first. We have a lot of tools that are already in Grease Pencil with lots of features, uh, but some of the like very basics, like for example, the fill tools are probably one of the weakest right now in Grease Pencil, so I wanna put focus on, on the existing tools, the eraser, et cetera, um, for, for the, the near term. Uh, there's some others there, like um, 
there's a there, there's a plan to move the checkboxes for um, the stroke and the fill where you decide um, how um, your stroke is rendered out of the material and onto the geometry meaning that you would decide um, when you uh, use the draw tool for example you would select oh I want to draw a stroke or oh I want to draw a fill or both um, and that has some implications that would make a lot of things inside of Grease Pencil also better under the hood uh, in terms of performance. Uh, yeah, fill tool I already mentioned. Uh, one of the big things is hole support. There's already one community uh, contributor who is working on adding hole support, like geometric hole support to fills, which is something we can't do right now. And that's also one of the big things that's missing to be able to have something like um, uh, a brush um, that is allowing you to draw fills. Um, so not like a lasso fill, but an actual brush that draws a fill. Um, so this is something that we need, and that's also something that I think we can do in the near term. Um, we also have already in Blender um, a pen tool. So if you, if you uh, use the, the curves object, you can draw Bezier curves using uh, a pen tool. I think it's very, um, it makes a lot of sense to add this to Grease Pencil as well, and I don't think it would be that much work. So this is also something that we could do in the near term. And then there's, of, of course, long-term projects. Uh, one I hinted at in the beginning is um, the rendering of Grease Pencil, integrating it with Eevee. That's a big change and, you know, basically getting rid of the current Grease Pencil materials, replacing them with node-based materials. Um, it's something we want to do, but we still have to design that. We have to find the people that can work on this. Um, but yeah, is is on our radar. Um, and that's, that's my part. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Rick now, who's going to talk about his Grease Pencil project. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Rick Schutte. I am the, uh, one of the 3D animators at the Blender Studio. And uh, after Grease Pencil, the Grease Pencil projects, I could say I'm a junior 2D animator as well. Um, <laughs> Just to give you a little bit of context about uh, the Grease Pencil projects uh, uh, from the studio. Um, in the beginning of summer, uh, Project Gold was finishing up a little bit earlier than expected. But um, that uh, gave us a bit of time to, uh, to do some smaller projects. And as uh, we were aware of the uh, Grease Pencil uh, development, it would be great to sync up some of these projects uh, to uh, tailor towards that development. And that was a quite unique situation because uh, normally when we work on a movie project, uh, during the project we encounter a certain need of tools, we ask development, but development is uh, working already on a million other things. And when those tools are finally finished, the movie is already shipped and uh, moved on. So uh, this was actually a great uh, situation to uh, create some projects that would enhance uh, development, would uh, help a lot with tool improvement and, uh, and encounter bugs that normally, you know, uh, I think it's a great way doing a production uh, to find those bugs that normally in a clinical setting are, uh, are just hard to find. And uh, on top of that, uh, when Grease Pencil 3 will release in November, have a great showcase of small projects that uh, the community can dive into and uh, yeah, be a, a cool uh, advertisement of, uh, of this update. So uh, just before we started, just uh, g let me give a little bit of a context on how we pitched this at the studio. Uh, we wanted the artist at the studio being able to uh, pitch in uh, ideas for a very short, like 10 second clip of animation tests. And the emphasis was on a variety of styles. So we tried to uh, explore different styles also to tickle the developers uh, onto, uh, you know, changing their tools a little bit in order to, um, yeah, make, for example, uh, more anime, pixelated, uh, all kinds of styles. Um, and this is the first test I did um, with, oh, with uh, 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 combining Grease Pencil with a, th a 3D environment. Um, and this was 
a great way to transition from 3D to 2D. As you can see, I am comfortable trying to make my blocking in 3D. And that way I already have a perspective, some timing and volume in there. And I could use that as a, uh, as a tool to actually uh, draw the, the character. Um, and you could call it cheating. I uh, think it's uh, uh, something where I felt comfortable with and, and having that work out pretty well. The environment and uh, lighting is done by Bo Gerbrands. He uh, helped me out with that. But it was a cool test to to go through the whole workflow of Grease Pencil and um, and uh, encounter already the tools that were uh, there. And this was actually done in Grease Pencil 2, but it was one of the first projects that was converted to Grease Pencil 3. And it was a great test to see if everything would neatly uh, convert to Grease Pencil 3, which didn't at the first time. <laughs> Uh, another great uh, uh, thing I was working on, this was really like testing out the variety of, uh, of purposes on how to uh, uh, implement Grease Pencil, is doing a pixel art uh, style combining uh, 3D and, and, and 2D animation. Um, I would say it's partially successful, we, and, but it was a great gateway into communicating with Falk and the team coming down, sit down with us, finding solution on how to merge uh, yeah, the, the, the Grease Pencil renderer, which is a separate renderer from the 3D renderer. Uh, we had some problems, as you can see, the pixels of, um, of Grease Pencil, the Grease Pencil objects are actually fixed and uh, the, the viewport was kind of a hack. So, uh, but it was a fun uh, experience to get the conversation started on how could we solve these problems uh, in the future. Okay, so this was one of the projects that uh, was kind of like the 10 second clip for me. Uh, I wanted to create a Grease Pencil diorama, I would say. Just a big scene with a lot of moving objects. Uh, uh, um, uh, and I intended this to be um, a scene where we also could performance test. So put a lot of Grease Pencil object animated in there. And um, so yeah, there, was, there were a couple of sketches I did just to, uh, to figure out where to go. And um, ultimately I decided to go for a, I would say half automated um, city house. Uh, the idea was that uh, all of the machinery would would help out with the laundry, with the baking, with the cutting the leaves, and uh, the actual person is able to make music up there. Um, you know, just having uh, that um, portrayed. I, I'm going to show you now a little bit uh, of the um, work in pro or like the the time lapse of of this pro process. Um, it's uh, skipping a couple of beats, but uh, you'll get the gist of, of how it's been done.
big shout out to Vivian and Julian as well, who uh, helped me a lot with the shading and uh, technical support uh, on uh, getting this together. Uh, yeah, House of Chores uh, is what it's called. Um, you know, I wanted to, to create this, yeah, well, as I said, like a very rich scene with all of these elements uh, being animated. And as I was making it, I added things here and added things there, uh, becoming this, this um, uh, you know, planning wise, uh, I would say we extended just a little bit. <laughs> um, but I th um, what the purpose was also is to use a lot of different applications of Grease Pencil in this project. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, the, the actual uh, 3D scene, but here's a version with the audio also made by Bo Herbrands. Um, and um, So what has been used here uh, is some traditional 2D animation. There's rigging uh, involved, there's uh, geometry nodes, uh, line art modifiers, and uh, let's go. Okay, so this is the actual 3D scene. Um, and you quick, can quickly see that it's uh, all smoke and mirrors. Whenever you turn around, stuff uh, falls apart. Um, but, you know, that's the illusion of, uh, of um, creating such a piece. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's, there's uh, uh, all kinds of, of animation uh, techniques involved here. Uh, as I said, like the rigging part, uh, it's a combination. And actually, this was something where um, during the process, the rigging and weight painting wasn't really done uh, with Grease Pencil 3. It was not uh, supported well. So it was trying to find, uh, for example, if I couldn't work on the actual uh, rigging, I had to work on something else before that was done. So it's trying to find uh, um, uh, other parts of, of uh, animation in order to, to uh, uh, wait for development to finish uh, the, the weight paint part. Um, and then, yeah, also a, a geometry note for, for the smoke. It's just a simple uh, line that uh, we use as a, with, with a modifier on top of that. Um, so working with uh, early alpha is, um, <laughs> this is very close to real reality. Um, it is, uh, yeah, basically the main goal of these projects is really to uh, support the developers uh, with with, uh, yeah, with problems, honestly. <laughs> um, but it was a, a great conversation and I thank you, Falk, for being patient and uh, helping out a lot. Uh, this is him doing some detective work, looking at a crash log uh, and finding out what, what the hell went wrong. And, you know, 50% of the time it was just me being ignorant, but um, <laughs> it's, it was, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, I, I think it was a great uh, collaboration in this um, situation where uh, we, yeah, could could uh, talk about the features, improve on UI, improve on ideas, but also uh, help out with with uh, with the bugs. Um, I honestly don't know how Falk did it, but he came came uh, by so often that I was like, where, where do you find time to actually code and make this all work? Uh, so in order to uh, alleviate some of that, we made kind of like a bugs log, like a, a grease pencil bugs log. And the reason for that is because you could say uh, we do bug reporting and just slam it as a bug report. But because stuff has been worked on, I wanted to, to create like a filter that would um, that uh, a file could read and say like, yeah, this has been currently worked on because a lot of features were not implemented yet. And that would create a, a somewhat of a check before we um, make a, made a bug report of it. And uh, along with some pictures. So it's a very, you know, it's just a spreadsheet, but it helped a lot of uh, negating some of, of the issues. Uh, so for gold, um, 
we use also a geometry nose technique in order for a post post production workflow what we did um, with that is uh, we enhance some of the brush strokes on top of the rendered images. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, this was an early test. I explored a little bit with geometry nodes, trying to make a, um, you know, a little bit of a paint paintbrush. And uh, that's how far I got with it uh, until uh, Simon took over some of his geonodes uh, magic. Uh, here's a shot from Gold, uh, where we additionally painted, um, oh. yeah, <laughs> I pretend to know everything about what, what, what is happening here. Luckily, he made some little titles, so I guess this is deformation. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, the idea was to um, create some extra strokes on the waves in order to uh, art direct the, the collision with the boat, for example. And there's a couple of uh, more shots that we uh, used by simply painting over. And what we, um, uh, what we used was actually uh, scanned brush strokes made by Vivian with uh, real paint and make that into a kind of like a brush atlas that has been imported into uh, a Blender as geometry nodes and we could uh, mix them together and uh, create uh, yeah, the, the brushes that, that we needed for, for each shot. Um, uh, this is actually the shading part of things where we could hook up different brushes, uh, apply certain textures to it, which uh, yeah, was, was pretty, pretty easy to work with. Um, let me actually go to the next video. Yeah, so this is a time-lapse video. And as you can see, I uh, first what I wanted to do is uh, mimic the brushstroke of the actual wave. So uh, finding somewhat the right texture, the transparency and, and color of it. And um, so that was always the first thing when we opened one of the, these shots. And when I found like, okay, this is roughly um, in the right spot, because everything is procedural, you can, you can adjust it anyways. Uh, I started, um, yeah, adding some splashes on top of uh, of the waves, and this was just, you know, frame by frame animating um, the traditional way. Uh, unfortunately, uh, onion skinning wasn't working because it doesn't take in account the texturing, um, but that's why you see me flipping a lot uh, of the times uh, between frames. Um, but the, that's how we kind of like did an enhancement pass on top of uh, of the waves. There, will I'll show a little bit of a compilation um, right after this. So this is some extra, uh, you know, extra um, visuals on top of of the shot. Um, so here's a compilation of some of these shots where we enhanced uh, the waves, for example. And some of these shots require a blocking pass first and then adding the, the final strokes to it. Um, with the wheel, we added also these streaks behind the tail uh, and that's all uh, painted on top. And uh, yeah, it was a fun, a fun way to, uh, to use um, grease pencil. And yeah, I'll uh, hand it over to my uh, colleague. Hello, I'm Pablo. I'm an uh, animator and to the, arti to the um, junior also. <laughs> I work on this. Um, I'm going to show it a couple of times. The idea behind this it was also testing Grease Pencil, um, but uh, more on an NPR level. So the idea was, uh, can I do something in 3D that looks 2D? And for that, you need to draw on 2D. And then we have a grease pencil, so it was, everything was aligning. Um, so yeah, the main goals, testing grease pencil, trying to create an NPR workflow um, in general, not just with painting, but in like how I was, I was basically just starting to think how 
our two D artists will do something like this since the beginning, like planning. So that's something I will talk in the future. And uh, the main concept it was making everything look 2D. That was the main goal. I wanted to have everything on the viewport looking 2D. So, uh, the, yeah, I needed to do drawover, drawovers over the, over the 3D mesh. Uh, up, uh, in the video up, you can see what I got by default with the light and some flash shading. And the, what I have um, below is uh, me under I, after I did all the touch-ups. So, um, yeah, I wanted to make everything flatter and I wanted to choose what I wanted to do at the same time. So basically I wanted to draw. Um, but I didn't want to draw every frame because I'm lazy. So I, um, I want to find a way to make the strokes that I draw follow in poses that were similar. So then I cried for help and Simon was there and he um, helped me and he created a tool it's called StickyGP. StickyGP is a tool that, as I wanted to, is just you draw, you stick it, and it follows. <laughs> Simple. I mean, I'm an artist. I don't, I don't want to be like touching here and here and here. No, no, no. You draw it, you stick it, voila. So, it's, G it's grease pencil, so you can animate it in another frame if you want, and I ask it for an option of, of like, okay, I stick them, but what about if I unstick them? <laughs> and I can move them, and I can stick it again. And that's the, that's the process. You can put them out, move them, readjust, stick it again, and then you are using basically the strokes that you were using before. So this, so thinking about uh, speeding up the process. So I think we kind of got something that works. Um, this is what I uh, started with. It was like a, just a light with the, um, some shadows are already pre-made and all the shadows I got them for free with the, with the light. But yeah, um, basically um, before the touch-ups, all the shadows, they were really blobby. The blobbiness and the, um, yeah, the blobbiness makes everything up. Oh, Yeah, the, the blobbiness on the shadows is what is mostly costing everything looks 3D. So I was really trying to avoid that. I will do it later. So the, in the workflow pass, I first we had this sticky GP stroke. I created all the materials that I was going to use. So uh, I checked the materials that I was going to have in there and I choose like a light and a shadow of them. So I divided all of them in light and shadow and was like the, the head, the mouth, the, bear, the beard, the, the t-shirt, all the materials I wanted to touch over. And after I had that stroke with all the materials, I duplicated uh, depending on the different parts I wanted to draw. Uh, that's what the workflow, I tried different workflows. This is the one that makes more sense for me. So I just took the head, took the neck, the t-shirt, the arm, the other arm, the pants. So like this was easier to later, if I needed to draw over, I need to continue. Um, to track what the other strokes they were doing. So this is how I started to use it. I was trying to kill the 3D shadows by making them more blocky. That for me, it's adding like a craft on the, yeah, like a stylish decision that you want to do. So you just decide how the shadow wa wants to be, but you are using what you get by default. So it's, at least for me, I'm not a 2D artist. It helped me to decide like, oh, this is like this, but I don't like it. I'm gonna do stuff and now I like it. So it was like a really um, easy process, at least for me, just by doing that thing. And it's like the same, you just draw, you stick it, you draw, you stick it, you draw, you stick it. And then this is, uh, this is why I wanted to show here how you can use um, the same strokes in different poses. You really need to do some touch-ups because you are also depending on the light that is coming. So th that light, when it's, the character is moving back and forth, 
is create is, is creating new um, shadows that you have to small do a small touch but as you can see it's really easy you just can you reuse what you had before do a small touch ups and it works when the arm for example goes to the back the, the strokes they are still stick but you don't see them because they are, they are in the other side so you re need to really redo all your um, all your shadows but it's not a problem because i mean it's just painting it you know it's easier than have to be removing your uh, light or something like that it's like i want this to be like that i draw it next haha <laughs> 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 but it's not all laughs and uh, <laughs> flowers no 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 <laughs> stuff breaks uh, there's some issues with this it's still experimental so we are we want to do it like properly and fix it and pack it and give it to the people but the, one of the problems is that you are sticking the strokes uh, based on the camera view so if you have an object in front in this case the hand you're drawing on the teaser some points are going to stick on the hand you need to go and do some cleanup some dissolving some um, some strokes and then it will stick to the to the teaser main problem is like you could leave it like like that the problem is like if you move the hand all the points are going to be stick on the hand so they are not going to follow the teaser properly so you need to do a little, a bit of cleanup at the moment um other thing is like you cannot paint out of the mesh if you paint out of the mesh the um, vertex they don't know where to go and they go to oblivion and then you have to kill them you have to dissolve them so um yeah it's uh, something i was dealing with all the time it was taking i mean not time but it was like it was a bit annoying to have to be dissolving all the time points that they were going home somewhere <laughs> yeah in, in both cases the um, the solution is dissolving the points not delete them if you delete them you break them whatever you do if you dissolve in they go in somewhere nearby um it was a problem also with the brushes um brushes when they were like really small below 0 0.01 they were getting nuts <laughs> i couldn't do anything uh, they were just like all over the place so um yeah i couldn't use brushes uh, like no, with the normal stroke so the solution i found was using fills uh yeah they were used they, they were feeling they, they were good but the um, yeah and they, they were easy to use and everything feels are good but they have issues the issue of the field is they are flat so when you were creating a big field the geometry was poking out you you have like a offset factor but the problem is like if you offset it offset it too much i was using line art so the line art was over no the the strokes the touch-ups they were over the the line art so they have to push more the line art and then move push and then at the end the, everything was like in five kilometers away and it was not nice so the solution it was like i just created a bunch of small fields just in a hacky way you know like you can see that this yeah it's not the prettiest way to do it but it makes i mean it works so. <laughs> uh, yeah conclusion um, the tool is promising, it's working, but it's not ready. I don't want to give it to the people yet. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to have something that is nice and you can work and don't get bold by using it. So yeah, we will uh, give, um, we will make it better and we give it to the people. Please subscribe, help us. Yeah, we have some time left, so um, I guess we can uh, have some questions. If people have questions uh, for me or for uh, Rico Pablo, yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna leave this here. So. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. So the, the question was about line art and if it was rigged or if it was just 
No, no, it was just normal. I just um, put it in there. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, we just uh, used a liner modifier. Um, Simon was in charge of it, but it was not really nothing super crazy. It was just line art. And then we used a couple of modifiers to make it more noisy and more um, use some envelopes and stuff like that. But it was not, it was just line art. Uh, what I did is like if the uh, line art was doing something I didn't want, I created another uh, sticky GP over the line art. I covered it. I mean, I'd rather do that. Um, yeah, I like to brute force everything. So <laughs> if I if it was something I don't like it, I'd rather just do it, and then that's it. Okay. Yes. Uh, I have a question about the oil uh, part. Oh, the gold part. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, so I would recommend, so today we're going to show a new add-on made by Simon. Uh, he uh, made an add-on where you can actually uh, generate brush strokes over your mesh and that will also extend uh, the, the edge of the mesh and you can, well, it's magic really. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I would highly recommend to, uh, I think around lunchtime we have uh, a booth there and uh, they will yeah, live. Okay. It's all day uh, doing live demos there, and you can check. But I think the add-on is already on the website or not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it will be there soon if it's not. So yeah. It will be yeah. at the booth 2 to 4 p.m. 2 to 4 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, yeah, today we have also a animation critique session uh, if you want to... Uh, show some of your work. We also will uh, roast our own work from uh, 10 years ago. So uh, I think it will be a fun time to, to hang out uh, with fellow animators. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay, so the question is about onion skinning and uh, onion skinning in world space. So this is something that um, people request a lot of times is that in Grease Pencil, the onion skinning is relative to the object. So if the object moves, the, the onion skinning will move with it. It won't actually display uh, the onion skin frames, uh, where they are, like in the camera view or, or in world space. Um, and uh, I, I made a proposal um, on Dev Talk, I think like a year ago or something, where uh, we wanted to figure out how can we solve this problem more generally. So this is also for 3D animators and you know rigged um, characters. How can we solve onion skinning for them? Uh, because the way Grease Pencil does onion skinning is very hackish, it basically just looks at the previous and next frame and also draws that. Um, but what you would have to do is basically evaluate uh, previous frames also so that, you know, you can do like, for example, for gold, uh, they were missing the fact that uh, they wouldn't see modifier evaluation in the onion skin frames, things like that. Um, and so we want to solve that more generally uh, with a system that would work across Blender. And as a proposal for that, um, and yeah, we just need to find the time to actually um, work on that project. But it's, it's something that's planned and we have, um, we have ideas for how to solve them. Yes. Okay, so the question is about uh, one of the near-term projects that I mentioned for Grease Pencil 3, which is to move uh, the toggles for fill and stroke out of the material and onto the geometry or like, you know, make it an option in the, in the draw tool. Um, and the reason why it makes things uh, easier is that right now during rendering, we don't actually know if a stroke is going to be filled or not. 
because materials can, for example, be overridden at the object level. So if you have a grease pencil object, you instance it, use the same data, but you change the material at the object level, you can fill strokes that wouldn't be filled in the other object, uh, which means that during rendering, we don't know, so we have to do a lot of uh, triangulation of strokes that don't actually need this triangulation to happen because they're not filled. Um, this is one of the optimizations that we could do uh, using this technique of just moving the information of is this filled or not onto the geometry, not in the material. That is super cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was good that you mentioned it. I uh, forgot to say anything about the texturing itself. Uh, yeah, texturing, uh, uh, the, all of the outlines has been done with grease pencils so, and the animation, but the texturing is done with texture painting in Blender and then Vivian took over and uh, did the details in Krita and then we reprojected it in, uh, back on, uh, on the mesh. So. Uh, one really cool feature regarding the projection painting is that you can now uh, select um, yeah, separate objects to be projected on. So it's not that it projects on everything, but let's say you paint on something that overlaps with some, something else, then it will only paint on the area you, or the object you have selected, which is a, a neat feature. Yeah. There is one question. Ah, yes, please. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so just to repeat the question, the question was, is uh, sticky grease pencil done with geometry? The answer is yes. Yeah, yeah, I went crying to Simon. I was like, I'm lazy, I don't want to draw too much. And then he just did like, oh, wait, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> if you see him, you can ask him. Uh, also, like, I'm going to um, do some uh, tutorial of all the process of the cowboy that is going to be on the... Um, uh, studio.blender.org, you can follow all the process and we will talk also about the tech, <laughs> about like, the technology of how the, we did the thing. And, um, so. Cool, cool. Yes? Uh, what was the issue where Paolo was trying to draw very thin strokes? Was it a, a sticky GP issue or was it a GP issue? Is it thin? Is it so the, the question was about uh, the issue that Pablo had when uh, drawing with very thin uh, stroke thickness and no it's it's a bug um, <laughs> I think it should be fixed by now but uh, it, it might sp still be there there's a report for it yeah <laughs> okay um, yeah one more question Is this about a uh, holdout in materials? Ah, uh, ah, okay, I see what you mean. So if you use a holdout, you don't necessarily see lines behind the fill. Yeah, okay. So this is actually one of the reasons why we need uh, geometric holes in fills, um, because that would solve this problem where you actually don't use, because the way holdout materials work is that um, in the renderer, you basically say that you don't want to render this part of the fill. Like it's, it's a very, easy trick to basically uh, cut a hole into a fill, but obviously that has problems of rendering stuff behind that. Um, so yeah, um, I think um, people are already working on geometric holes. Uh, that would solve this entirely. You would basically like have one stroke, have another stroke, say like, oh, I want this to be the hole of this stroke, uh, and it would create the hole and put them into one shape. Yeah. <laughs> yes.
Yeah, so the question was about uh, line art and specifically line art uh, when it interacts with lots of objects. Uh, so if you have intersections, etc. And so I think um, there are multiple plans for line art. Um, we, ha we have to talk to Yuming about it more. <laughs> uh, but one of the ideas is to integrate line art more into geometry nodes. So indeed, like you mentioned, um, solving this with geometry nodes, I think, is probably where the future is. You can get very complex design style, so Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, if you have lots of interactions, it can get a lot, a lot more complicated. Um, but it's probably better if we don't um, uh, extend uh, the modifier itself more and try to build it into a nodal system where people can do crazy st stuff. The answer is nodes. Yes, the answer is nodes. <laughs> That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> yeah, I think we're, we're out of time now. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you.